yes, this is exciting. Welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Daldit. Welcome to the show. We're going to hang out and craft together. Today, we are actually live. I told you guys, if you reach us to 12,000 YouTube subscribers, I would do a live show. And you guys went past that. You went way past that. So I'm here today doing a live with you guys. That way I can answer all of your questions back and forth. Uh, just to start off with, I did just get braces, so... I'm learning to talk with them. <laughs> My husband said, don't apologize, own it. So I'm going to own it. Um, but I am learning to talk with them. So I'm sorry about that. Not sorry. He told me not to say sorry. <laughs> I am so excited. Now, I usually don't do lives. I'm usually pre-record. So I can't edit out every time I sneeze or <laughs> say something uh, and go long-winded. So you're going to have to help me with that one. So let's go ahead. And I want to say hi to you guys. I usually am in the chat. We always do a live premiere before every show or when the show usually comes out every Saturday. I'm in the live chat for the first time the show runs saying hi to everyone. But now I actually get to say hi to you. So let's go ahead. Let's see. And remember, I'm usually pre-record. I'm not as good as Barbara Dowd when she does her live shows. So I am uh, baby steps here. Okay. Be, be, do be gentle. So let's see. Hi, Paula. Hello. Let's see. Hi, Miss Cindy. Miss Cindy watches all of them. And I recognize your name and your icons all the time. She's from Tennessee. I love Tennessee. Let's see. Miss Mickey, Julie, we are coming home today. Oh, okay. Oh, so <laughs> Miss Julie's poor thing. She she had a rain in her cows. So, Miss Julie, I hope that went okay. Let us know you're okay. <laughs> let's see. Miss Wanda, hello. I love when your guys have pictures of yourselves on there. It helps me put a, a name and a face together. So I appreciate it. Hello, Miss Susan. Miss Norma, hello. Miss Jean from Texas. I am actually heading your way. Uh, I'm just going to go visit my grandparents, but I'll be in Texas. <laughs> Let's see. Hi, Miss Cheryl. Oh my goodness, there's so many of you guys. Hi, Miss Vivian. Hello. I'm just popping you guys up on here now because there's so many of you guys. Hello. Oh my goodness. And guys, I read every comment, like every single one of them. I sit there for hours reading comments um, and I'm a little behind on answering them, but I do read all of them. Hello. Oh, from San Antonio. Oh, also watch LSU Tigers baseball. Yes. My mom was over the other day and hooping and hollering in the living room. And I had to run in there and ask her what was wrong. And she was watching the LSU ball game. And I think we won. I don't follow the sports, but <laughs> I think we won. She was very happy about it. So hello. Oh, my goodness. There's so many of you guys. Oh, my goodness. Now, it is just me manning the comments. So I am going to try to answer all of them and see... See, you guys, I love your headband. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. I'm just I'm just clicking through. There's so many of you guys. It's just coming in so quickly. Um, now, I did some, we, here we go, Miss Trisha. I did see hashtag all brands. Now, if you watch the all brand show, uh, Barbara Dallet, she always does a giveaway because it's a live show. It's easy to do a giveaway. Um, I'm pre-recorded, so it's a little bit harder to do. But since we are live this time, would you guys be okay if we did a giveaway? So... I think that would be fun if we did a giveaway. So don't forget to comment hashtag all brands to be entered into a $25 all brands e-gift card that we'll actually be able to send you by email. So e-gift card. So hashtag all brands throughout the show. At the end of the show, I will pull for uh, someone to win that e-gift card. So hashtag all brands. And I'll remind you guys later on. So don't forget. Um, but that way, I mean, we're live. Why, why not do a fun, fun thing? So let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. <laughs> I always I always want to do a live with you guys because it's so much easier. I've done a live on the All Brand Show. I've been on there a few times. So you've been able to uh, ask me questions. But this is the first one after hours that we've actually done together. So let's jump into it. When I was thinking earlier, I was like, you know what? I'll be answering questions, but what do I want to show them? What do I want to be able to tell them in person? Um, and I thought it'd be easy just to do an overview. That way, if you guys had any questions about a certain thing, 
you'd be able to pop in and, and ask the questions. Or you guys are really great about answering other people's questions too. Um, we have a lot of people that are new to the community, new to scan and cut, and they're not really sure and they're just starting out. And I really appreciate you guys are always in the comments giving encouragement, answering people's questions, or just giving them that insurance or that reassurance that's like, yeah, I did that. I actually, you know, did this mistake. No, there's no mistakes, but I accidentally did this and it was fine. You know, everything can be fixed. So let's go ahead and let's go over just a quick overview. Now, a lot of you probably know that we need to turn this on. <laughs> I didn't realize I never turned the machine on. Good morning. Okay. She's waking up. Now this one right here, I always get a lot of questions that, Courtney, what machine do you have? I have multiples because I love these things. <laughs> I love the machines. So this particular one that I use a lot on the show is the SDX325. Why do I like that one? Um, I never have a favorite. I love them all. Um, but I like this one because she's got one of the better um, image tracing. So whenever I scan something in, she's really great about showing it to me with pristine lines and there's not anything odd or funky and then I have to rescan. She's really good about doing that. Um, she also has built-in designs. As they come out with more and more scan and cuts, they add more fonts, they add more designs, they add more quilt blocks. So they add and add and add, which is great. I want all those things. Um, now, if you don't have the latest model, go on Brother Canvas because they put them on there too. And then it's nice because then you get them again. And everyone's always like, Courtney, why do you harp on about Brother Canvas? Because Brother Canvas is the software that comes through with your Brother Scan and Cut and it's free. So there's no subscription fees. There's no... Uh, I heard there's one of the machines, tell me in the comments, which one is it, that makes you sign up for a subscription every single month to be able to use your designs that you have on your account. That That's insane. Brother, brother doesn't do that. So it's free with your machine. Why not use it? It's that screen, but bigger. And we've done two videos on Brother Canvas, dedicated videos. I think the first one was on, okay, what is all, where are these buttons? What is this button? What is this button? What is this button? The second one was a little bit more detailed and went over even more of the buttons because there's so many things to do on that. So it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Brother Canvas. I did a part one and a part two, but just because there was so much on there. Let me see what you guys, I have an SDF 325. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I have a pretty old one, but I can still use brother. Yes. Yes. Um, so sorry. <laughs> Braces. Um, yes, you can use brother canvas. Even if you have an old model, you just go on there you tell them what your machine is. You should have been using brother canvas anyways, because you want to register your machine. Why do we want to register our machines? Well, if something happens to my machine, I want documentation of, of it. So you put your serial number in there. If I had, um, kits on there, kits get saved to your brother canvas account, not your machine. So if something heaven forbid happens to your machine, I've seen where people lose them in a hurricane and a flood or something like that. So it's nice to have that documentation of your machine. So let's see. <laughs> Barbara Dow that's in the chat. Hi, Barbara. I had to call her right before the show and be like, hey, quick question. <laughs> How do I do this? How do I do this? I want to do a giveaway. How do I do that again? She's awesome. And she told us how to do it. So thank you, Barbara. She is the uh, the live queen. Okay, I'm just borrowing the throne for today, but she is the queen of it. All right. So let's go ahead. I see you guys all. Y'all are so sweet in the comments. Oh my goodness. Y'all are so nice. And honestly, that is half the reason I keep doing this to you guys because y'all are so nice and just, ugh, it's a great community that we have here. So I really, really appreciate. Oh yeah, I know Miss Mickey. I wish, I wish uh, the art spirit, the baby block people could use the embroidery files. Uh, art spirit is a uh, similar campus in my opinion. Art spirit is brothers uh, app that they have it haven't dived enough into it i'm barbara has a ton but i haven't dived enough into it to uh give it a full review yet i've dabbled in it so that is something i actually need to look into so thank you for reminding me for that one all right guys so let's go ahead and let's open her on up and i have multiples of all the blades so i'm trying to like pick and choose here all right let's see what's hiding in this one my favorite one. i don't need that all right so let me put this screen down so you guys can see a little bit better. See, Barbara would do this while not looking because she is awesome. But Courtney has to look. <laughs> my, my computer's right here. You might be able to see an edge of it. Uh, so I'm sorry if I keep looking this way. That's that's because my computer's right there. Um, 
she is really fancy and she can do it while staring at you. I can't do that. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go over blades real fast. Again, we have a lot of new people. So I like to bring it back to the basics every once in a while. So then that way they don't feel like we're on step 100 and they're just starting. I hate, I hate that. So um, depending on what model you have depends on what blade you're going to get. So each machine, usually, well, not each machine, but each machine, well, yeah, each machine is going to come with this one. What is this blade? If I don't drop it, see, this is where I would edit it out if we weren't live. <laughs> this one right here is your black auto blade. So what this does is it, um, if I'm doing a material that's thicker, so say I'm doing something like a puffy foam or I'm doing, oh, you know what? Uh -huh. Someone told me they thought this was a green screen. No, <laughs> like it's, it's really behind me. I can actually touch it. So this is where I keep a lot of, a lot of my things. So if I was doing something like this cork, I'd probably grab this one because it's kind of thicker. So if I was doing like a leather or something like that, I'm going to grab this one. Well, Courtney, why wouldn't you grab your fabric, fabric blade? Fabric blade, I feel like this one's the one I use for my cotton material. Just a plain cotton material. This is the one I'm going to use. Um, if it's anything a little bit thicker than that, then I'm going to this one. So fabric blade, really just cotton material because they came out with the rotary blade. And the rotary blade is awesome because it's for delicate fabrics or more intricate fabrics. Let's see what I have behind me. Do I have anything? Ah, ha, ha. We did these on a show. This is a piece of felt that we cut out. If you notice, I don't know if you can notice it on camera or not, um, but I can see through this. When I'm looking at it, I can see a light through this. So it's more delicate. So I would use my rotary blade. If I was cutting out the, there's one, uh, this one, this piece of plain cotton material. Okay. My fabric scissors would go good for that. So these, if this has got a heat and bond light on the back of it, well, you know what? I'm going to take my fabric scissors and do that one again. So trickier fabrics, do I lean towards this one more than the rest of them? Probably, especially with fabric materials or something trickier. I do lean towards this one. So she is probably my most used and probably my black auto blade are my most used. There are additional blades. So if you didn't get this one with your machine, like the 325 doesn't come with it, the 330 does. Um, so if you didn't get it, you can get it in the, oops, there we go. You can get it in the kit separately. So this would come in the rotary kit. If you have an XTX 330, well, it came with your machine. So the black auto blade and those came with your 330, but your 325 would be these two guys. So the vinyl kit doesn't come with any of the machines as far as I know. They do not. So you would have to get the the, uh, the vinyl blade kit. Courtney, these are a lot of kits. This is a lot of extra stuff. Yeah. Well, if you're not doing a lot of vinyl, then you don't need the vinyl kit. If you're not doing a lot of fabric, that's tricky fabric, you don't really need the rotary kit. It's kind of geared to exactly what you need for your machine. All right. So those are some of the blades other than the drawing blade, which I feel like people don't really uh, talk about. But I love this one. We actually used this in last week's video where we had to draw out our design so we could hand stitch. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed editing that video. It was a little bit different, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, I see the comments are coming in. Let me answer some of the comments before I keep rambling on. Let's see. All righty. Let's see. I'd like to see a video that used Canvas from with Scan and Cut changing SVG to cut files on a 12 by 20 format. I'm trying to cut out vinyl into a pocketbook bag part. Hashtag all friends. <laughs> I like how at the end of that, she was like, and for the giveaway. Um, Yeah, totally. Yeah, we can do a uh, from Canvas SVG to a 12 by 20 format. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do I have? I do have a USB right here. Um, usually with that, you can send wirelessly as long as your machine has wireless uh, feature to it. So if there's a usually a W, if it's a 325 or 225, 230, 325, 330, those are all wireless. So if you have any of those machines, you have wireless. And a 650W is wireless, um, which is a CM model. So that was before auto blade. It, you had little numbers right here and you'd have to adjust your pressure setting and I'm sorry, your cut blade and your pressure setting on your mat to be able to cut. 
with uh, the newer model, there's no more of that. It automatically senses how deep that material is and will only cut through that material, which is so cool. Um, let's see. Next one. Love the Art Spear app. Okay, well, I need to play with it more, Miss Anne. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. You're doing great. Don't compare yourself to Barbara. I don't. I'm teasing. I mean, kind of, you know. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hello, I was live. I was in the live. Oh, okay. You were in live a few days ago. Let's see. Is there a scan and cut cheat sheet to download? Um, no. I used to do a, um, when I did my classes, I would bring them, depending on what model they are, so this was pre-pandemic, um, I would have two sheets that I would give them that had, um, if they had to know their blade setting and their pressure setting, it kind of gave them a starting point because every machine was different. So if a blade setting worked for your machine, it might not work for someone else's machine. They had to fine tune it, but at least gave you a jump start. With the auto blade, there's no more of that. There's just put it in your machine and go. So I, I don't really have a sheet that, uh, that kind of gives you a jump shot, uh, start with that. Now, there are two videos on our channel that I always recommend. It's Scan and Cut 101 and Scan and Cut 102. 101, I go through every blade, every mat in depth, a lot of the accessories. Um, we go very, very in depth. Bless that recording. That was that was a little while ago, right when I got back from Houston Quilt Festival. Um, and my voice was so we might have to redo that video. 102 is where we go over every single one of the icons in the machine. So I recommend those two videos for if you're just starting out. Let's see. Thank you for asking that. Let's see. When doing an offset for applique, how often, uh, how much of an offset is recommended? Okay. So she's saying whenever she cuts out her applique, she brings it in. So if you bring it in through your USB, you know what? Let's do, let's see. There we go. <laughs> to see if this was pre-recorded, I could have edited that part out. All right, so let's go ahead. And I'm not really sure what's on this USB, so we're going to find out together. Retrieve data from where? Our USB. And again, if you had it wireless, you could have just thrown it from wireless. So let's go here. There we go. So if the machine, so this is a PES file. If the designer had given me a, a um, an actual cut file, well, then I'd go to the shield and that's where I would have found it. But this one doesn't. So it's like, hey, there's no cut file here. So if I go to the flower, it's actually going to make one from scratch. So this is giving me the inner and outer. I get that question a lot, Courtney. How do I get the inside of my applique? That's how you do it, inner and outer. This is just giving me the outside and this is giving me the stitches. Well, I don't wanna use the stitches. What am I gonna do with that? So for this case, I would wanna do the outer part. Is it okay? Okay, now this is where you go bump, bump. <laughs> so I usually at least like, oh no, sorry, set, edit, object edit, resize, bump, bump. There you go. So that's gonna make sure it's, the machine is reading straight on the line. Like here's the stitch line, it's reading on that line. So what we're saying is if you go up just a little bit, just at least one or two, don't go any further. It's going to make sure that that needle is gonna catch the outside of that applique, that fabric, when it goes around to um, stitch it out. So thank you for that question. This is so much easier. You guys could ask me and I can literally show you right there. Let's see. Uh... Oh, Joanne Banco. Oh, I love Joanne Banco. If y'all don't know Joanne Banco, what the heck have y'all been doing? Um, I will actually be on Joanne Banco's show, Let's Go So, uh, this Monday. We're going to be ch chit-chatting. Me uh, and Barbara Dowlett will be on Joanne Banco's show, so make sure you definitely check that out. It is a lot of fun. She is just a wealth of knowledge. If you want to talk about a sewing queen, that is Joanne Banco. There you go. All right. Let's see. I don't have a skin and cut, but my sister-in-law does. So interesting. Okay. So you are the exact opposite of me and my sister because I have a skin and cut. She does not. She has a different color machine. We don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> and I do all of her projects, <laughs> which is fine. I don't mind. It's, it's a fun bonding time. So I actually really enjoy it. Let's see. Uh, let's see, guys. 
Oh, here we go. I have the 85S and I love it. Just can't get it to hook up to the Wi-Fi, but I can do so many other things. Um, honestly, I, the 85 is great. SDX 85. Any, honestly, anything with auto blade. A lot of times people always ask me, they're like, Courtney, I have this machine. So I switch over this machine. It's all features. It is all features. If you like all the features of that model, you go for it. If you want other features and different things, okay, then get that. And if you have a CM model that was pre-auto blade, usually I recommend to go. It's welcome to this. It's so much, so much easier. Um, then I go to auto blade. But if it's still cutting and you like it, then you keep that machine. Honestly, I have one that is not auto blade because I run them all. And I really appreciate that around Christmas time when I'm doing a ton of different projects and I have multiple mach multiple machines going. You can't beat it. Alrighty. Uh, I think Brother has a small manual on their website. They do have a lot of what on uh, Brother support. If you go on there and tell them what machine you have, sometimes they'll have manuals and stuff. It's very, very helpful. Let's see. Miss Rebecca, I cut some cork on a brand new mat last week and the blade cut several squares through the mat. Horror of all horrors. Can the mat be taped on the back? Yes. So before the C, uh, so before the auto blade, um, if you flipped my mat over, it was duct tape city. <laughs> and I duct taped that thing to an inch of its life um, to make my mats last longer. Now, your auto blade shouldn't be going through your mat, which makes me very nervous. So what I would recommend to do is take your blade, whatever blade it was, go ahead and open it up. And you're going to see your actual little blade on there. Let me zoom, switch cameras. So you guys, there we go. So you're going to see the little blade in there. I would make sure there's no debris. There's a little crusties on mine because I'll use it a lot. But I would make sure there's no debris in there because that it could affect the sensor of being able to read it. So make sure there's no debris. Um, you know that the spatula, let me hide the comments so you guys can see a little bit better. There we go. Um, the spatula tool that comes with every scan and cut on the back of it is this foam bit. So take that foam bit, take that blade. You're going to push it into the foam bit to get that blade out safely without getting it near your fingers. Um, make sure there's nothing in there. Blow it out if you want to. And you could either replace the blade or put that one back in and do a test cut, just a small test cut with that to make sure that that's okay. If it's still giving you errors and there's nothing wrong with the mat, there's no creases to the mat, then I would bring it into your brother uh, authorized repair center. Allbrands.com is one. If uh, you are around any of our locations, we have seven. All righty. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Here we go. I have the CM650. When cutting cardstock, I don't get a good cut. Should I adjust pressure speed or the blade? Okay, so she has uh, presets that she has to do. Okay, so what I would recommend is I, I would play around with both. So what I would do is leave your speed be. If you ever notice when you're cutting, if you're giving rivets or it's giving little, um, not dense, dense is a bad word, but it's like pushing, then you want to adjust pressure. If you ever notice that it's cutting, but it's more scoring, not cutting, then you want to adjust the blade. Um, if you're noticing that it's doing a little bit of both of them, adjust your speed. So that's that's usually you kind of you start narrowing it down. Okay, if this is doing okay. Okay, what's this? If this is doing okay, what's this? And this is if you have a blade that you have to adjust. So CM models. If you have an SDX, don't do anything. You're Trust your auto blade, you'll be fine. Um, if you notice that your auto blade is dulling after a long time, the bl actual blade is dulling. Okay, it might be time to get a new blade, but you can up the pressure a little bit <laughs> manually in here um, to get it to last a little bit longer. But usually I just get a new blade. All righty. Let's see. Put duct tape on the back. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're mad if you cut it. Put duct. I used to get like pretty duct tapes too, so then it made me feel a little bit better about it. All right, let's see. Oh, Joanne Vanko, looking forward to having Barbara and Courtney as special guests on my Monday live show. Guess I just spilled the beans. Oh, no, it was me too. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, wait, was it a seeker? Was I not supposed to say anything? All right, everyone keep it quiet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. What is the best setting for to cut cork? Um, If you have a... um. What is my hair doing? Um, if you have, see, if it wasn't live, I would have edited that part out. <laughs> if you have an auto blade, go ahead and use this blade. 
you can use this one. If it's thin, you can use your fabric blade, but usually I use my black for that. Go ahead and do that. Pop that in there. Tell it to cut. There's nothing additionally you have to say. If you have a CM model, that's when you start playing with your settings. Um, I usually say if you have a CM model, start with your cotton material, whatever setting works for your cotton material, and start working up from that. Um, I wish I had my little cheat sheet. I could pop it up. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I would set it with. And I would do it on my regular blade, not my deep blade. If it's this, I wouldn't do my deep blade. My deep blade was whenever I started doing like really thick material. If you notice, it's not giving you as great of cuts and switch to the deep blade if you want. Alrighty, let's see. Oh, and don't forget, guys, we are doing the giveaway at the end of the show um, for the $25 e-gift card. So don't forget to put hashtag all brands in the comments and that will actually enter you to win. All right, let's see. How to import a purchased rhinestone design. Same concept. So um, what you would do is you can send it wirelessly from your computer if your machine is wireless, or you can put it through a USB. I have a habit of doing a lot of USB. I feel like that's kind of my go-to because usually my laptop at, is at home and my machine is not right next to it. So I just put stuff on USB as a habit, um, especially because I have my home sewing room and then the studio here that I use and one day I will give you guys a studio tour if you want that um right now it's a little messy I actually filmed a decluttering video and I did not post it because I was like some things need to be kept a secret <laughs> some things need to be between just me and this room okay um so same concept you're going to put it through your USB retrieve it from your USB like how we did a minute ago um and it should bring it right up to there, your brother's pan and cut can read a PES because it is a brother machine and their embroidery file is a PES. It can read an SVG and a uh, FCM. So if you have any of those three or if you have a software that can convert it to any of those three, you're good to go. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, it was the auto blade. I changed it and cut out new parts and it worked well. It was auto blade. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we finished. We figured that one out. Alrighty, let's see. Is there a comparison chart showing features of the different machines? Yes. So I'm trying to think of all brands has it on there, but I know Brother has it on their website of the different different machines. And if you have any further questions about those, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, again, it's all features. They all cut. Most of them draw. It's just you know different different features on there. Alrighty. I know it can get a bit a bit overwhelming with all the different numbers and letters and that's why I usually when I'm rattling off the different model numbers I look to the sky because I'm like uh <laughs> which one am I talking about all right see hello my first time I've been looking at your videos I'm interested in the one of the scanning cuts I think I will buy in your all brand site but I'm sort of confused I don't do material but I'm interested in the oh and I think it cut you off oh there we go the scanning images <laughs> there we go <laughs> good it brought you over to the next one um Thank you for considering purchasing from all brands. Uh, I don't think I say, I say this every once in a while, but we are all brands. We're family owned and operated since 1976. And when my beautiful mother-in-law uh, decided, you know what? She wanted to start her own business. So it was very awesome. Um, so on our website, we do have more of the information. So detailed bullet points of every single machine. So if you ever have a question about a machine, um, also I always recommend our website because if you scroll down to recommended accessories, They'll only have the mats and blades and accessories that work for that model. So you don't accidentally buy something for the wrong model. Um, so I always recommend that. I, I highly appreciate that. And every once in a while I scroll through to make sure they have it correct. They do. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the scanning feature to be able to scan it in, it has a built-in scanner, which I don't really think any other cutting machine could say that. So you can automatically scan a material in, I'm sorry, a design in automatically turns it into a cut file or a draw file or wherever you want. So say I had, I always tell the story. Let's see. There we go. I always tell the story about this. If you've ever met me in person, I usually have this with me. This right here is a piece of a banner and she's quite old. Let's see. She is seven, seven. This thing's seven years old. Um, oh, that got me in the pills. So this is actually a piece of a banner that used to say, happy birthday, Angela Grace. I'm sorry, Princess Angela Grace, because my sister called me the night before my niece's first birthday. 
So I guess it is six years. She was one years old um, and said, hey, I need a banner to go with her birthday party. I didn't I don't have a banner. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, what do you want? Um, I wanted to say happy birthday, Princess Angela Grace. I'm like, OK. She's like, and I wanted to have crowns. OK, these are the crowns that my machine has built in. Mm, I don't like any of those. OK, we go on Google, type in crown. OK, find one, find one that she likes. I print it out on computer paper, regular computer paper. Scan it in my machine, turns it in a cut file. I get my 12 by 20 format. I duplicate it. So a ton of them, however many I need. I literally wrote out happy birthday, Princess Angela Grace, counted how many of it would be and wrote that down. So I knew, OK, this is how many pieces I need. This design is in the machine. Put it all over the mat, cut all those out. This glittery part, that is that design, shrunk it down. Then I went and grabbed the font that she liked. Thankfully, she liked one in the machine and wrote out the letters, cut all that out. It was a simple line, took us a handful of minutes, and we had this beautiful banner. And I kept a piece of it because it made me happy. But we also took that crown and we put it on shirts. We put mom shirts, dad shirts. We had a um, birthday shirt. For her, because, you know, one-year-old, they do the cake smashing. So she needed a change of outfit. Um, we also made the cake topper. So that way it looked like a birthday collection. Um, but it was just something that we made. And I already had the card stock. The only thing she had to bring me was some of the shirts in their sizes. So I usually bring that around with me. So scanning, scanning is cool. Sorry, guys. This is this is why I'm pre-recorded, because I get long-winded. <laughs> Let's see. I have an SDX uh, 230DX. Can it transfer files wirelessly? My baby lock slayers no. Uh, I don't think it can go to a baby lock. I think it would have to be a brother. Um, I'm trying to hurry up and think. I think it is just a brother machine. Um, I'm going to say probably just a brother. Now, baby lock, you might be able to put, you could put it on a USB well, if it's an SVG, I don't, I'm not, I'm not familiar with Solaris, so I'm not sure. I, I'm not the right person to ask for them. I'm sorry. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> we miss our open stores in Lake Charles. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Honestly, I, I miss that store. Nate Nathaniel was uh, the manager there and he is phenomenal. Still with Aldrin's. Um, we got some skylights we didn't want during a hurricane <laughs> that was uh not fun we missed that store i do too that was one of my favorites it was an old blockbuster so it was like all the cool windows it was a beautiful store okay see this is why i'm pre-recorded uh no <laughs> it's like don't worry no secret whatsoever you're good <laughs> i was like oh no did i accidentally say something i wasn't supposed to um Will there be a larger fabric mat? This is something. If you've watched the show for a while, you know this is this is this is uh my hill to die on. So I'm actually gonna this is where I hide my mats. I don't know if you can I don't think you can see it. Um, so it's where I hide my mats. There's a large door that's in there, and I have my 12 by 24s, but I have my 12 by 12s in there. So all the all the mats got a 12 by 24 except the fabric mat because she's the newest mat so there's always been a standard a low tack and a scanning so they all came with their 12 by 12 mats and then 12 by 24 so it's 12 across but 24 down so you got all the space and i love having all that space even if i don't need it sometimes i appreciate it except the fabric mat doesn't have one so you have to take a high tack support sheet put it on a lower standard mat to make it into a fabric mat and if you've ever worked with high tack support sheets your machine cuts through it and then it flakes it. And then you have to get it off of your mat to put a new one. It's a whole thing. I mean, it works and you can do it. So there isn't a 12 by 24. So I'm really, really hoping brother comes out with a 12 by 24 because that would be, when that happens, I, I, you all probably go live and just be like, what? <laughs> I really want that 12 by 24. I'm right there with you guys. Um, let's see. Studio tour. Yes, please. I know. And actually, so it does look different from the last time you guys saw it. Um, I did put the shelf in here. You might remember it from Barbara's old studio. Um, I did put that there. This tree was there and it bothered me because there's an outlet right there that I covered up with a plant. So it's always bothered me. Uh, the tree went there. We've kind of switched some stuff up. And don't worry, that quilt stand, that's actually across from me over there. Um, I'm just, yeah. Let's see. 
if the file isn't proper format like SVG, you can scan it in. Yes. So it can be anything under the sun, whatever you want it to be. Um, so say I, again, how I typed in crown and it just pulled up a bunch of images. I usually personally, my searches are uh, black and white crown. Can the scan and cut scan something in that isn't black and white? Absolutely. It does a great job. Um, but usually I'm just wanting outlines a lot of the time. So I type in silhouette of a, of a crown, which is really funny that I use the word silhouette. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, I usually type in something like that or I just type in crown. But usually with it, it's like people wearing a crown. Well, I don't want that. This is what I wanted. So if you type in clip art of a crown, you'll generally start getting something that you want. And then print it out on your computer, regular printer paper, scan it into your machine. And we've done this on the show quite a few times. Um, I'm trying to look around and see if I have it nearby. And I don't think I have it nearby. Do I? Courtney would not be in there. I don't think I have it nearby. Darn, I was hoping I could have it like right here and I could grab it. Um, we did the video burning wood on your with your brother scan and cut. Very cool video. Um, and I actually scanned in something that I had printed offline. And then I took a Sharpie and added to it before I scanned it in because I wanted it to have more floral design to it. Scanned it in and it was beautiful. We actually had turned it into a cut file, cut it out of vinyl, put it on a board. And I used a torch pen. Do you have a torch pen? Yes, I do. I use this torch pen to color it in. It's like a forbidden marker, um, color it in. And then I took a heat gun and I heated it up and it burned it into the wood. So I used the scan cut to make like a template. All right, let's see. And that's a really, 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 really um, good uh, workaround. Can you please answer my question? What question was it? <laughs> I'm sorry, the chat's going so fast. Let me see. Oh, I did, we did answer it. Okay, I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, you guys are so fast. Let's see. Such a cute banner. Thank you. I thought it was cute. So I was like, I'm going to save a piece of it because, of course, after a breaking party, they're like, take down, throw everything away. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. Let's see. Is the Roto Blade available for the SDX 230D? Yes. I want to say yes. I think it is. On our website, allbrands.com, it should say it on there, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and we're really good about putting what machine things are for. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Let's see. I love that you guys are answering each other's questions. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm like running through the, you guys answering questions. It's phenomenal. Okay, let's see. Love the burning wood video. Yes. So again, that burning wood video was really, really cool. I got a call afterwards from one of my coworkers that said, Courtney, did you just say we're going to burn things or which it catch things on fire, or put something on fire? And I was like, yes, I did. We, it wasn't actually on fire. It was burned. It's, it's a different According to HR, it's different. <laughs> no, just kidding. They didn't say anything. It was fine. I went outside for the for the worst part of it. Okay, it wasn't in the building. Let's see. Half the time, I figure out. Oh, Terry's here. Hi, Terry. Terry is uh, the manager of our Lafayette location, and he is a wealth of knowledge walking around. He is phenomenal. I love Terry. Uh, so if you haven't come to All Brands Lafayette, you are missing out because they are just a really good good group. And Terry, I want to on on the live apologize for that time that I brought a foster kitten into your store and let it run around because I was waiting for its foster mom to come pick it up. So <laughs> it was a good sport. But there was a kitten running around that store for a few minutes. And it was a it was an interesting time. All right, let's see. I'll have to look for the word burning wood. Yes. So if you type in, um, if you're on our YouTube page, if you type in the top, it, it searches our whole channel. So you can always search keywords like wood or um, burning or just all brands after hours. And it pulls up all of our videos. And we also have it on a playlist. So all the videos are on a playlist that you can just binge watch. I don't know why you would want to, but <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yes, I have the machine and the rotary blade. Hey, Carrie. Carrie's a sweetheart. She was actually with us last Houston Cold Festival. Um, that was a lot of fun. Let's see. Cool. If you, again, if you guys haven't made plans to join us for a Houston Cold Festival, it is a blast. We actually have a lot of fun. If you've never been to festival, 
it is rows and rows and rows of vendors just with all sorts of things. And then there's rows and rows of beautiful quilts um, to walk through. I literally run through. I make sure like, they give me like a second break. I run through the quilts to look at them. They're beautiful. Let's see. All right. I make greeting cards. It would be a dream to have a brother scan and cut being saving. What one would be the best for that? Just simple paper stuff. Um, simple paper stuff. What? So again, I don't have favorites, but my two that I always lean towards are probably the SDX 325 and the SDX 330. What are the biggest differences between them? The 330 has Disney built in. So Mickey Mouse and all of his friends and all the princesses and all of the uh, cars and Lightning McQueen. Not, yeah, Car cars and Lightning McQueen, same thing, Corny. Um, Buzz Lightyear. Oh, think of Buzz Lightyear. This, again, would be the part that I would edit out on the show. Um, it's got all that built in. So if you're wanting that, and then, then it also comes with the rotary blade and your black auto blade. So, but again, remember, you can get this separately in a kit. The 325 doesn't have Disney, so no mouse. And you get the black rotary blade and the fabric uh, blade. So your thin fabric blade. So you would get these two with it. So that is personal preference, which one you would prefer. Um, but those that's one of the biggest differences. Yes, the other one has a few more built-in things, but that's the biggest differences that I've seen already. Um. What time will we will you be on? Let's go. So on Monday, I think it is at seven. I think Joanne's probably gonna put a comment. <laughs> I think it's on seven. Um, and I love her show because I've I've been binge watching it. Um, because it's a lot of just different people from the industry sitting down having an amazing conversation, and she is phenomenal. Okay, let's see. I'm going to Houston Cole Festival for the first time this year. Looking forward to seeing you there. Yes, I will be there in the Scan and Cut booth, um, acting up and having a lot of fun. <laughs> what is a great first project to send from Brother Stellaire XJ1 to Scan and Cut or vice versa? A simple app, okay? I feel like everyone always, like, it's kind of like my party trick, um, is I get an applique and I will put it into my machine. Or, sorry, I'll take the applique from the machine send it to my scan and cut, cut out my applique um, and send back, which I guess you wouldn't have to send back if you got it from there. But if you wanted to scan something in, cut it out and then take that scanned in image and send it to your, only your uh, Stellaire and your XP machine, it could talk back. So they can, every, all the brother machines that are wireless can talk to the scan and cut, but the scan and cut can only talk back to the uh, Stellaire's and the XP, so the Luminaire's machines. Yeah, so a simple applique. It's always, always the favorite, always the go-to. All right, let's see. Can I cut intricate, busy designs? Yes. So again, reaching, reaching back to my hand, my thing of tricks. I did this at a show. If you came to OSQE, you actually saw me cutting out. This is just a plain piece of cardstock that's shimmery. I have a habit of cutting out shimmery things. Um, and this isn't even intricate for the machine. This took a handful of minutes. I was trying to think of a design that would take a long time. So that way it would be super busy. And I could like talk to people without having to like really do many things. And it took a couple of, couple of seconds and it was done. But yes, yeah, super, super intricate. That's the beautiful thing about the scanning cut is these little bitty blades can go very, very, very detailed. So if we were doing that, or if we, let's do this one. Or if we were doing something like this, where you see that curly Q part of that pumpkin, and this is vinyl. Now, you know, vinyl is two parts. So you can do a half cut on the machine. What is a half cut? A half cut is where you only cut through half of the material, which is phenomenal, because if it's something like this, well, this is heat transfer. I want to be able to put it on my shirt or wherever I'm putting this heat transfer to. And if I would have had cut it out all the way through, well, I would have to move every single letter and make sure it was lined up okay. But since it only did a half cut on my machine, I can now take the whole thing, put it on my shirt or my bag or whatever it is I want, put a piece of protective cloth. I know a lot of, a lot of times I see people putting iron straight to this plastic. No, no. If your iron is not hot enough to melt this plastic, it's probably not hot enough to heat up that uh, that heat uh, heat transfer well enough. So I always say protective cloth down, iron on, heat it up. 
whenever that clear part peels off okay and that vinyl stays on there without the tugging then you know you're good if you notice you are pulling it up and it is tugging put that back down cloth back on heat it up again so yes you could do it with a hand iron um and that's it's going to heat up and fine but i'm talking more people that are doing this as a business or they want it to last a really long time through multiple washes if it's on a kid shirt you know you're gonna have to wash it um a heat press works real good or just make sure you're getting an iron that's getting up to the heat that it wants and a lot of heat transfer vinyl on the packaging it'll tell you hey this is the heat temperature that this vinyl needs to get to so that way you're not just guessing like, oh, maybe it wants this or maybe it wants that. A lot of times they'll tell you on there. Um, at least get up to like a, I hate to give a temperature, but at least get to like past the 350 to a 400. All right. So this is, again, this is why I'm pre-recorded. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Caroline said, how can I convert applique templates to SVG files for scan and cut? Well, if you have an applique, so say you have a template do you mean like a paper template or because if it's just like a design that you buy online a lot of times they'll give you all the different ones so they'll give you a pes i think a husk of iron's what's it aqs there's different ones just get the pes bring it to the machine to cut out your design um if they give you a cut file take the svg and do that but again that's your that's your workaround now if it's a paper template scan it into your machine just scan it in you've got it on there and the nice part is if you scan it in Bam, you've got them built into your, or actually saved to your machine. So if you accidentally lose them or anything like that, they're in your machine now. Or if you're doing a ton of them and you know that this is something consistently that you're going to be doing over and over and over again, save it to your machine. Save your favorites to your machine. I reached the limit. I don't remember how much it was, but it was like ridiculously high one day. All righty. With Blade catching previous cut area. Any way to change the order? Mine keeps catching just cotton material. It's catching on the material. Get some material magic. Um, I don't think I have any with me right now, but it's uh, it's like a starch, any kind of starchy material. Material magic I like because it washes out. Um, get that. Go ahead and do that. It's going to give your fabric a little stiffness to it. So when you're cutting it out, there's there's less that it should be catching. Like when it frays or anything like that, it should be, should be less. Um, I treat my material with material magic when I know, which this is treated with material magic. We notice it, it's kind of got some, uh, some uh, what's the word? Some oomph to it. <laughs> um, I treat it when I know I'm traveling around. I'm going to be messing with the material a lot and I don't want fraying. It, it doesn't hurt your material and it washes out. So I probably would recommend doing that if it's just a cotton material that's really prone to fraying that's what i would do all righty uh absolutely best intricate cuts right it's really good uh let's see carrie said intricate cuts fast and quick quiet yes so the thing about quiet is the previous models so my sewing room is right by the kids room and i had to stop crafting at a certain time so i wouldn't wake the kids because they'd be like wah, 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 wah. Um, <laughs> this is again, pre-records, I probably would edit that part out too. Um, but now they're so quiet. They're so super quiet that you can just do it anytime. And with our embroidery machines, we're kind of used to it being like, you know, being super loud. Um, so I, I like having a quiet machine. I appreciate that. Alrighty. Please explain the pros and cons of the rotary blade. Okay. Um, so we did a dedicated video on the rotary blade and it's up on our channel, just rotary blade. Um, so the pros of it are that it cuts very, very intricate fabric. So again, our cotton, our wool, things like that, it cuts like a dream. Uh, any, it, it was made for like slick materials. So think if you've got a silk, a chiffon, lace, anything like that, that's a little bit trickier, fabulous. Fabulous. She does a great job. And she actually jumps around. So not, she doesn't do like these blades will just come around to cut something. She's going to jump because that way she's looking for your best possible curve, your best possible cut, where these just go straight. These do great. And they're both auto blades. Um, a con, I hate to call it a con um, because I don't mind it, but it, if this is something you would mind, this one is going to do a three millimeter thickness. This one can do the three millimeter thickness, but you might have to run it multiple times because she's only going to do a one millimeter at a time. Because a lot of people will tell me, hey, Courtney, I got the new rotary blade. It doesn't work. And I'm like, 
Um, and they're like, yeah, it doesn't work. I ran it. It didn't cut through my material. And I'm like, how many times did you run it? Was it a thick material? Because if it was something like this felt, this felt has some chunk to it. And they're like, yeah, it was. I'm like, you might have to run it two or three times. I usually only have to run it twice if it's something super thick. Um, then you have to run again and just hit start again. That's it. Don't move it. Just hit start and your final will, will cut through. Um, because it, it, again, it's looking for that best cut. So it's more worried about finding a crisp cut than going all the way through. Now, the scanning cut, the great thing is how it goes through those three millimeters is it's going to score, in my opinion. It's going to come down. It's going to cut. And then it's going to come down again if it's a thick material to come down and cut. Instead of trying to shove that blade all the way through that material, that's how you start getting things shifting and moving. No, it wants a light, crisp cut. So it's going to go around maybe multiple times. So this is going to do it on its own without you telling it. This you're going to have to tell. So that's that's something that I feel like didn't no one really talked about at the beginning. And everyone thought their rotary blade was messed up. But that, that's all you do is run it again and it would be fine. All righty. Let's see. <laughs> uh, sorry, should say, please. I have used fabric blade, rotary, and standard. What would it be, blade or mat? Thanks. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm sure it was a previous question. Jog my memory. <laughs> Let's see. I went to buy vinyl, but was so confused. Can you explain what the difference is and what? do stickers for my nails for fourth oh I want to do stickers for my nails fourth of july i used to do that I actually um i keep doing my own nails because i never have time to actually go to a salon so don't look too close um <laughs> so have i done stickers i've done stickers on the show but never nail decals i think i did that on a live show like a year or two ago um with the Auburn show a long time ago but i don't think i've done a dedicated video on it um so you went to buy vinyl and you're wondering about the different kinds. There's a good bit of vinyl out there. The two most common that you'll run across are heat transfer vinyl, which is what this was. Actually, let me pull some vinyl out. Great examples. Okay, so this is pressure sensitive vinyl. So think if I wanted to put it on a Yeti cup or a Stanley cup, because I know those are popular right now, or if I wanted to put it on a wall and do a wall decal or something like that, or put one on my machine, Pressure sensitive vinyl would be the go to. So it's a paper backing to it. Heat transfer has, which this is deceiving because it's white, but it's not a paper backing. Here we go. Let's use this piece. All right. So heat transfer vinyl it has the shiny side and then a matte side. That matte side is actually the glue, the glue that you're heating up to be able to put it on something. Um, that's what this matte side is. Now, heat transfer vinyl, you would want to use on a material. So something that you don't mind putting an iron to. So would I put an iron to a wall? No. Would I put an iron to a t-shirt? Yes. So heat transfer vinyl. Would I put it on an apron or um, different things like that? Yes. So heat transfer vinyl for that. So what you're doing is when you do heat transfer vinyl, shiny side down on your standard mat, your purple standard mat, and you're going to do a half cut. You're going to half cut through. Then you're going to weed out the parts you don't. And we've done vinyl videos on heat transfer. So definitely check those out on our channel. You're going to weed out the parts you don't want, like our little pumpkin here. Weed out the parts you don't want. That way you're only left with the parts you do want. So you can put them on whatever it is that you're wanting to put them on. Protective cloth. Remember, protective cloth just has to be a piece of a scrap, piece of cotton fabric. Um, nothing special. Iron it down or your press if you're doing your heat press. Clear part comes on, design stays on, and then you can layer different vinyl. Now, speaking of layering vinyl, if it's a heat transfer vinyl that's glitter, I wouldn't put it on another heat transfer vinyl that's glitter because I feel like that glitter messes with the glue and it never holds for a long time. Yes, it'll hold for that minute. So if you're just needing something real quick, then yeah, I'll hold. But if you're doing it for a long time, I wouldn't put a glitter on top of a glitter. You can put a glitter on top of a regular heat transfer vinyl. That's going to hold just fine. But on top of glitter, I feel like that glue never, never really gets set like it needs to. So um, with that, just cut all the way through the vinyl. So that way the glitter vinyl's on holding on to whatever fabric it is. All right. Um, there are other kinds of vinyl. There are stretch vinyls. Um, I think I, I want to. I haven't actually filmed it yet. I want to do a video on stretch vinyl that you can do on an umbrella. Um, and maybe do an umbrella on the show. There is uh puffy vinyl that has like some thickness to it. There's so many different ones. I have not found one that I could not put in my machine. So 
as long as it's under a three millimeter thickness, you're good. I have not found a vinyl that is thicker than three millimeter thickness. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Do, 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 do. Can you talk about what different kinds of paper that you use uh, that you have used for projects? What are some of the basic papers that you should have for paper stash? Okay. Um, my paper is actually stored over there. Do I have some right here? <laughs> Let's see. I keep a lot of supplies here. Yeah, I do. Okay, so there's nothing special about paper. It's personal choice. Like I have this pack. Oof, I'm just wop myself with it. Um, I have this pack that I bought from Walmart. Nothing, nothing, just a bunch of colors. Um Again, as long as it's under three millimeter thickness, there's not really many cardstock papers that are bigger than three millimeter thickness. I usually use cardstock. Can you use other papers? Yeah, totally. Do it on your low tack mat, which is your blue mat, is what I would recommend. But there's no special ones. If you want to get into specialty papers, like really nice ones, if you're doing something for a wedding on your scan and cut, totally fine. You can do it as long as it's under a three millimeter thickness. There's no other like special thing you need to do for it. Okay. This slide has been the best. <laughs> Courtney, you are terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, let's see. And I see more hashtag all brands. So don't forget to put hashtag all brands to enter into winning the $25 e-gift card that we're going to do at the end of the show. Oh my goodness, we've already been doing this an hour. <laughs> I have not looked at the clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. I see reviews about mats losing stickiness after a few uses. Any improvements? So yes and no. So they came out with the fabric mat not too long ago. It's been a little bit now. Um, and that has been the stickiest mat that we've had out. So a lot of times people will lose stickiness on a mat and they think, okay, that's the end of this. Like, what do I do with this? It doesn't have stickiness. And then that's when I start seeing crazy things that people are doing to their mats to make them stick again. So what I usually recommend, and yes, I keep it close by, um, is this. We're not affiliated in any way. We don't even sell this, but I recommend it. It's called uh, Totally Awesome. You can get it from the Dollar Tree. Um, and it's what I do to clean my mats. So usually what you do, and I wish I had paper towels with me because I would just do it right now, um, is you take your mat and you take the protective sheet off, spray your mat down. Then you're going to come and get your scraper tool or, you know, whatever you have, scraper, and you're going to just, just push around. You're not scraping. You're not pushing hard you're just moving things around getting that gunk moved around on your mat um and then you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to wipe it off so all of that liquid off of your mat do not dilute this do not do 50 50 ratio full strength full strength and uh leave it dry so I usually what I do is I clear all of this off of my table and I put mats on here and I clean them I do an assembly line and I have them lay there without their protective sheets and I have them lay there and they dry and then as they're drying, all that stickiness comes back. So they get super sticky again. And then you put your protective sheets back on. But I do that every once in a while with my mats to keep them clean. It makes them last longer, makes them keep their stickiness for a longer time. So highly recommend that and I always have some on me. And usually um, I go buy the big jugs of it and I fill up that container. That's why the packaging is rubbing off on it. I keep filling that one up at home and here at the studio. I just keep filling it up and it's really, really great. It's highly, highly recommend it. All right, let's see. It's more fun listening to you when you don't edit because you speak our language and make us laugh. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I know Barbara, Barbara always does her live shows and I'm like, man, that's sometimes I need to edit, <laughs> edit me. But I, I really think we'll do more live shows. If you guys want more live shows, um, I will move the screen over here so I don't have to keep facing here. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll do more live shows if you guys want them. Totally cool. Let's see. How often do you go through mats? How many do you have on hand? Um, I have a lot on hand, <laughs> but it's because I do this. Um, and at home I have quite a lot of them. Um, again, because I have multiple machines and I simply line them. Uh I would say I I would have each of the mats. So you have, if you're going to do fabric, have your fabric mat. If you're not going to do fabric mat, get the fabric mat too. Because in my head, it's not just the fabric mat. It's the stickiest mat available. So I want the stickiest mat available because if I'm cutting out things that are like uh, balsa wood, 
you know, or um, acrylic. <laughs> I'm showing you guys all my hidden secrets down here. Um, if I've got that, well, I'm going to put that on the stickiest mat. No, it's not fabric. It's wood and acrylic. But I want to make sure that it's holding on there really well to cut so I don't get any shifting. So fabric mats, yes. Yeah. Standard mat I use mostly for vinyl. Um, and my low-tech mat I use mostly for paper. If you're not doing paper, you could also use that as a scanning mat if you don't have a scanning mat. Um, so I always have, I always recommend at least one of each. If you want the 12 by 24 mats. <laughs> I don't even think it fits in frame. There we go. Let's do it this way. There we go. If you want the 12 by 24 mat, so usually it's a, just a 12 by 12. There we go. Usually the ones that come with your machines are two 12 by 12 mats. Depending on what model you have, depends on what which ones come with it. But it's always going to be 12 by 12. They don't ever put a 12 by 24 in the box. I wish. Um. So the 12 by 12 mats, great and everything, but this gives you double this area. So I love the 12 by 12. So if you are 12 by 24, so if you know it's a mat that you use a lot, like your standard or something like that, or you want to make yourself a fabric mat with a um, high tax support sheet and throw it on the floor, um, then, then the 12 by 24 makes sense to you. For my personal use, I make sure to have two of each on hand. But again, I'm doing this all the time. So I don't want to be in a situation where my fabric mat, say I've done felt or wool on one of my mats. Well, that's going to not be much usable until I clean it. It'll be fine after I clean it. Um, so I like to have another one on hand. And plus, it's kind of like doing laundry where I wait till I don't have any socks. So I have to go, I have to go clean them. It takes two seconds to clean. I'm being, I'm being dramatic, but I'm not even wearing socks right now. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, Courtney, you are wealth of information. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you know what? Um, that reminds me. So a lot of people are like, Courtney, did you like, take classes or like how did you learn this it was, it was all just trying 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 doing 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 making some mistakes and then going oh okay i'm not going to do that again you know and then learning on top of that so don't be scared to open your box up your for your machine and just play play have some fun go on pinterest create a board that says scan and cut projects that's what i did of all the different things that i saw that i'm like man I bet I could do that. I want to try to do that. And then I would just, every once in a while, go pick a project. Or my sisters would call me and be like, hey, can you make this? Hey, can you make this? Hey, for breast cancer awareness, I want a dinosaur with holding uh, uh, the ribbon for my son for his shirt to wear for breast And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hi, happy to catch you live. Hi, I'm so glad you caught, you caught me live. Um Oh, I agree. Courtney is fun. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Let's see. When you use Hero Magic, do you follow the instructions, saturate, hang for 10 minutes? Yes and no. Uh, I have a problem with listening to directions. <laughs> um, so when you're using Hero Magic, you're going to spray it on there. So remember, this is the stuff to start. So you would spray it on your material. And usually I do it in batches because, again, if I'm doing it, I'm just going to do it in batches. So um, there's... There's two different ways that I've seen. You can spray it down um, and make sure it's good and saturated. So I usually get some gloves and I kind of work it into the fabric. And then I lay it out as flat as I can. Um, and I'll lay it outside if it's a nice day. You know, you kind of pin it up on the fence or something like that or on the picnic table. I leave it out to dry and it dries pretty quickly outside because I'm in Louisiana. Dear goodness. Um, or I'll put it in... Um, in the bathtub <laughs> or somewhere that doesn't mind getting some wetness on it. I leave it to there dry. It'll, it'll dry. It takes a little bit longer inside. And then once it's pretty dry, I go and I to bring it over to my iron and I'll iron it because sometimes when it's drying, it might have a few wrinkles. So I'll iron it and it gets all those wrinkles out and makes the fabric super, super nice. And then I fold it up to whenever I want to use it or go ahead and use it. And again, I do mine in batches, but I know it's a material that I'm going to use a lot for that. Um, so yes and no. Uh, sometimes I'll let it not be fully dry and I'll get impatient, but that's when you start getting some steam. <laughs> Makes me nervous. It's like when you're straightening and curling your hair and it's not quite dry yet and you get a little steam and you're like, I'm doing damage. Um, but it doesn't hurt your fabric. You're fine. Uh, do all DX machines come with a USB port for uh, file transfers? Yes, they do. Yes. I 
think all skin and cuts do. So even if you have uh, a CM, you, you should should have it on there. Uh, love you, Courtney. <laughs> you give such good information or instructions. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's a pretty flower. Alrighty, let's see. Do, 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 do. I can't always remember which side is up on the mat. Always seems country. Okay, so on the DX mats, there's going to be a little arrow pointing up. And that means in your machine. Put that arrow into your machine. They gave us a little, little hook. And if you watch the show, you know how I feel about this. Um, to hang up your mat. So if they're drying or that's how you want to store them, you could do that. Um, they used to be where you could feed them in. So CM model, uh, machines have a different mat and you can feed those in either way. I preferred that way personally. I wish they would switch back to it because the little hook, I never use the hook. If you do, that's fine. But I would prefer to be able to scan in both ways because if you ever had an instance where, um, say, I dinged up the corner of my mat really bad. It's not going to want to feed in as well because that corner is being dinged in. Well, I used to be able just to flip it over the other way and scan it in that way or feed it in that way and it was fine. So look for the arrow. If you have a CM model, you have different mats, you can go both ways. For an SDX, you can only go one way. Brother, I'm waiting on a 12 by 24 fabric mat and please make the other mats where we can feed in both ways. All right, that's a sore subject for me. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I have to thank you for the hint to use awesome Dollar Tree to clean my mat. Works so well. I stupidly put mat paper on mat and it got stuck. Uh, got almost all of it off. I made it stickier too. Oh, I made it stickier too. Um, yeah, so we've all done it. It's like a rite of passage at this point that you're going to accidentally, and this, you're not even meaning to. Sometimes I'll have my fabric mat there because I'm doing a project and I'm like, I have a piece of paper and I'm not thinking and I just put it near it and it doesn't have the protective sheet, which is why the protective clear sheets are so important. I accidentally laid it on there or like a piece of pressure sensitive vinyl with the paper backing, laid it on there on my fabric mat. Brand new fabric mat, which you know, those are the stickiest mats of life. Laid it on there. I could have cried. <laughs> I cleaned it off. It was fine. I cleaned it off, but that was a, that was a moment. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, USB port. I think so, but cables with USB drive aren't included. No, no, it's a, uh, so your USB, just any USB. And a lot of times people ask me, Courtney, does it have to be a certain USB or a certain size? No. Anything you want. It, it, there's no certain USB. There's no particular USB. I know a lot of times people will say that to try to sell their USBs. No, there's no particular USB. If you want a bigger USB to hold more stuff, okay, then get that. If you want a smaller USB, okay, then get that. I take whatever USB is on my husband's desk, okay? <laughs> All right, let's see. I think, and you know what? I One thing I love about this, the uh, All Brands After Hours, and what I hope that we're doing is debunking a lot of things that you guys have heard um, that isn't quite right, we'll say. Um, just, I, I, I want there to be no incorrect information in the world. All right, I'm uh, I'm so fascinated by this and I don't own a cutting machine. Someone, what is it? Uh, my friend texted me, she was like, why am I watching your show and I don't even have one? And I'm like, because I'm awesome. <laughs> no, because it, it knowledge is always a good thing. Knowledge is always fun. So whenever, if you do want to get a cutting machine in the future, well then you already have the knowledge of this one and you can compare and contrast and do everything like that. Plus crafting is fun. <laughs> I just love it. All right, let's see. Um, Awesome is terrific for mats. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fabulous. I love totally awesome cleans everything. <laughs> I love that stuff. Family store carries it too. Oh, okay. Family Dollar carries it. Are those connected? I don't know. It's like the Dollar Tree family. Is that two entities? I think it's. I know because sometimes you'll see like when you randomly driving by. Sorry, I'm getting on tangent. You'll see like a Family Dollar slash something. Is it like one of those Taco Bell slash? Uh, chicken places. I don't know. I don't know. But very good to know. Thank you, uh, Robin. Family Dollar and uh, Dollar Tree both carry them. And I've seen it random places, but just consistently, that's those are the two places then. Awesome. Why can't you use baby wipes? You can't. 
So since according to brother, because remember I'm all brands, I do and say what I want usually. Um, according to brother, what they would recommend is you take an unscented baby wipe and then you take a um, tweezers and or your fingers and you pluck off every single bit of lint that ever has found your skin, uh, mat um, piece by piece. And then you take an unscented baby wipe and you wipe it down and then you let it dry. That takes forever. And it doesn't, it doesn't bring back your stickiness. If, if it's just a little bit and it's kind of dirty, sure, unsend the baby wipe, wipe that sucker down and then, you know, let it dry. <laughs> I need to edit myself. <laughs> wipe it down and let it dry. It totally works. But totally awesome is when your mat is an inch from death and you're debating on giving it a home in the trash can. Spray that thing down <laughs> and clean it off. It, it works phenomenal every time. So yes, you can use with baby wipe. Totally awesome. She's just coming in to uh, help us. Um, let's see. Found a jug of Totally Awesome at the Pop Shelf store. I've never heard of that. What is that? Hmm. Cool. See, that's the neat part is I think if you're from different areas, you have different stores. Um, that is so cool. Love all your shows. You're so sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. And if you guys ever have recommendations for shows and things that you would like to see me do, um, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to do any of it as long as it's within reason. <laughs> Let's see. Live shows are so much more fun because they're interactive with viewers. Thank you. Let's see. And honestly, I wouldn't mind doing more live shows. Guys, just let me know when best. I know seven o'clock is kind of late. I mean, we call it after hours. And if you've ever met me in person, you know why it's called after hours. Because if uh, the owner of all brands sees something that he does not like that I say, well, sir, you can't get mad at me. It was after hours. All right. <laughs> Let's see. More live shows, please. <laughs> all right, Sue, so I will listen. Also, and this is the sweetest little cats. Oh, I'm a cat person. I'm a dog person. too. I'm an animal person. Okay, we just got a fish. My son named him Fishy Dog. That was it. We call him Fishy. Hopefully he's okay. I think I'm more invested in the fish. How do you store your mats? Okay. So I store them two different ways. So at home, I store them. Uh, it's in Alex door. They're like the long ones, not the skinnier ones. Um, they're in the long doors. And I made sure my husband, we measured um, on their website. We looked, we measured my scan and cut mats, what they actually were to make sure that I could lay them flat in those drawers. So that way I just have a pull out. So all my 12 by 24 sit in one area, my all my 12 by 12 sit in one area and I can just pull those drawers out here at the studio, which I'm really just showing all of my information. Which there's a, there's a cover to a, a mat. Probably should figure out which one that is. Um, there's a door right here that's super long. So it takes from here to here or pretty far back. And they're just, they're tucked in there. So that way they can lay flat. You never want to roll your scan and cut mats. Um, cause you don't want to bend the edges. Cause if you bend the mat, it's not going to work as well. So you want to make sure wherever it is, even if it's laying on its side, like these are, it's straight. So there's no weirdness going on with it. So yeah, that's, that's how I store mine, store them flat. However you do store them flat and they have the little hole on the SDX ones that you can hang up on the wall if you want to do that in your craft room. Because I mean, they're, they're not ugly by any means. You can hang them up there. I think that's why they put the hole. So then that way you had that option. All right. Let's see. Robin and my husband accidentally sprayed totally awesome on the window when he grabbed the bottle from underneath the sink. I was laughing because it was a mess. I've never used it on a window, but those are probably the cleanest windows of life. I don't know if you can see through them, but they're clean. Uh, will the 12 by 24 map work with the SDX 85M? I don't know. Um, I don't know. That is a good question. I want to say no. But if you go onto our website, allbrands.com, I hate to give wrong information. So I'm not going to say either way. Um, if you go on our website, allbrands.com, it should say on there if it is compatible with a, with a, 12 by 24. I really want to say that it can cut a 12 by 24, but it cannot scan a 12 by 24 is what, I don't know if that's the 125 or the 85. So check our website. It should have the information on there. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to give wrong information. Um, can you do a video showing the scan and cut feed roller for long cuts such as a wool borders. Yes. So that's actually on the list of videos I want to do. So what she's asking is the roll feeder. It um so not I don't know if you can see. Let me switch cameras and see. Uh, you can kind of see it here. 
Oh, we're going to really mess with things. Okay. So right here on your scan and cut, wait, which one is it? Is this one? Okay. On your scan and cut, you have these little things that you're able to open up this drawer, but not only is that for opening your drawer, it actually hooks that 12, the roll feeder. And I don't think mine, mine is here. I think mine's at home right now, but it actually hooks onto the front of this and it's got a roll of vinyl that feeds in. So you can do up to six feet of continuous vinyl to do large decal. My friend, she had a Alice, not Alice. Um, she had a, um, what is it? Not Wonderland, Peter Pan. Um, she had a Peter Pan nursery and she wanted them flying over the crib. So she wanted, you know, Wendy and Peter and all, Michael and all of them. And I, John, the other one's John. Yes, got it. <laughs> she had them flying over the crib. And she was like, I want it just one big piece. And I'm like, yeah, totally. So we cut it out on the skin and cut to make a giant wall decal. And then we did strips of the vinyl to do around the border of the ceiling. And it was like acorns and leaves and the baby's initials all the way around the room. It came out gorgeous. We actually did it with the, not this vinyl in particular, but a similar one. Oh my gosh, it's fabulous. So yes, the roll feeder is amazing. I will do a dedicated video on that roll feeder because I highly recommend that thing. That thing is pretty cool. I need to stop calling it a thing. Um, let's see. Uh, uh Okay, you were so right about just learning and jumping in. When I see Facebook posts about people that are afraid of their skin and cut, I feel so sorry for them. I use mine constantly. Yeah, I mean, everyone has to start from the beginning. Everyone, sorry, braces. Wow. Um, this is another thing. My, uh, I'm. We're not going to say my age. But don't feel ever weird about doing something you always wanted to do. I've always wanted braces and I got them. So um, don't ever feel weird about jumping into something new. Because everyone was new when they started out. You know, it, it. I was new when I was starting out. And I always tell the story of whenever they got the first scan and cut in retail, they were like, Corny, come look at this new cutter machine that we just got. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to type in my name. I cut straight through the mat. <laughs> straight to the brand new machine in the retail store that no one had really played with. I cut through the mat and there was no one else in the building named Courtney. So it was on me and I had to go and tell them, Hey guys, you know, that brand new machine you just got that you're really excited about. Yeah. I just messed up on the mat. So sorry about that guys. So again, don't feel weird. And, and, and be encouraging. That is a huge thing. Be encouraging when you see those new people, when you see them, uh, worried about things like that be encouraging me like you know what you should start with this project oh you have fun you know do this be encouraging about it because the more people in this community the better all right that's too funny probably one of the few things that you shouldn't spray on it don't spray that on the window uh let's see do you need another sister i'm available <laughs> i have two and i have how many sister-in-laws do i have <laughs> Four? I have four sister-in-laws and two sisters. Um, you know what the wild thing is? Um, only one sister-in-law, so Barbara, uh, knows about all brands and like all the crafty stuff. My other sister, they don't watch her channel. They don't uh a few times I'll make things for their kids and they, I think they think I bought it. I don't ever say anything. Um, but yeah, they don't, they're not huge crafters with me. So I will take gladly take another sister and a brother because they are silly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for the material magic instructions. Yes, because I mean, you can read the bottle, but like actual using it. I usually like to hear from people that have actually used it. <laughs> yes, well, all our sisters. Yes, you are, Miss Cindy. Let's see. Um, this has been so informative. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Again, if you guys want more lives, I don't mind. Just tell me what's a better time for everyone because seven o'clock at night, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking out the window right here and it's getting dark. Um, and I'm realizing I've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. If you guys are okay with that, I will keep going. Um, sorry, braces. Thank you so much, too, for helpful information. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your days to come hang out with me. This is awesome. Uh, it's true you can DIY mats. It, okay. Is it true? Is it true you can DIY mats? Um, I haven't personally gotten away with it yet. So what she's saying is... So I know whenever the SDX came out, everyone with the CM model, myself included, were like, man, I have all these mats. I have all this whole stack of mats. What do you mean? I can't use them in my new machine. Like I can't transfer them over. I've always been able to. So a lot of people were, oh, that one. 
Oh, I gotta stop throwing things on the floor. Again, this is where I would edit myself. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if you guys ever notice the parts that I edit out. Usually it's if I sneeze or something like that. Um, or if I get a phone call, which I did put my phone on silent. Um, so whenever your machine is reading these, these little things right here, um, that's what your machine is reading when it feeds it in. Um, and what it's doing is it's, it's, if it was the scanning mat reading that in, it would know, oh, there's a scanning mat. If I told it to cut while the scanning mat was in there, it'd go, whoa, hold on. And it wouldn't let me do that. So it protects my mat. So I appreciate that. Um. If I told it to scan using any of the mats, it would. It's just that cutting feature that it wants to protect. So you don't ruin your uh, mat, a scanning mat. Um, so a lot of people were like, oh, I bet you could switch out this somehow or block this somehow on one of the mats to get it to read through. I've never been able to get it to do that. And I'm not bold enough to try to cut up a mat to figure that out. I just go and buy a new mat. So uh, I haven't gotten to, I, I've heard that someone that people have done it. I just haven't personally do it, done it. So there's nothing I can recommend for that. Um, would I try it? Probably not. They're kind of, not that they're expensive, but like, come on, you know, I, I don't want to accidentally ruin a mat and just be like, well, that's the end of that one. Um, yes, you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Brenda. All right, let's see. I got a gallon of totally awesome at Home Depot. Okay. Home Depot, okay. <laughs> I like how I said Home Depot. Like that's that's the craziest thing I've ever had. No, I'm just kidding. That's your old. Okay, so at Home Depot, we're made. I like that as a community. We're like, okay, I saw it here. If you guys are looking for it, I saw it here. You know, this has been going on for a while. So I'm getting goofy. All right, let's see. Uh, so glad to get off my phone and on my laptop. Oh, you're watching on your phone. Yeah, I know my my husband bought me a tablet. Um, and I'm trying to. Uh, use it more. I forget that I have it. I need to get a pen for it. Uh, Family Dollar and Dollar Journal are the same company. Okay, Miss Sandra. Investigation. I like it. <laughs> Dollar Tree owns Family Dollar. Okay, now it's coming for full circle. Okay. If I manage to cut my mat, what's the best way to repair it? If you cut through your mat, um, duct tape, just Turn it on over on the back side of it. Put some duct tape. You heard the country come out in that moment. Um, duct tape. Put some duct tape on the back of it, and it should last you a little bit longer. If it's a bit of scoring, if you do a thick material, you might get a bit of bit of scoring. When I do puffy foam or thick leather, I get a bit of scoring. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to hurt it. You'll be fine. Um, but if it did cut through, which is rare, um, duct tape. Duct tape is your best friend. All righty. Um, what can we use in Australia to clean our mats? We do not have Dollar Tree. Well, I'm hearing that it's been a few other places, and I'm sure you could buy it online. Um, not at all brands. We don't sell it. But I know, I'm sure if you type in Totally Awesome. There was one show that someone asked me what the what's comparative, and someone said in the comments, and I don't remember what it was. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure if you Googled it, it could... Um, I like how I say Google it instead of look on the internet. Um, something comparative probably will come up. Doesn't mean putting all the cleaners on your mat. Don't don't do that. <laughs> That's the only one that I've I've liked. Um, when cutting a mat, wait, whoa. when cutting on a mat, is it normally normal to have the cut lines on the mat? Newbie here. Okay, one, everyone, help say hello to Jennifer. She is new, and we are a welcoming community. Uh, Again, you're going to sometimes have a bit of scoring. The first project that comes with 325, sorry, braces, um, 325, and I don't know about 330, I think 332 is a box. I don't think I have it on me. Do I have it on me? No. Do I have it over here? Yeah. Um, I think it's over there. Is a box. It's a 3D box that they have you make out of paper. And sometimes that one scores your mat because it's a pretty thick cardstock. And a lot of people get really worried about it. Um, it's fine. It's totally fine. Don't don't worry that it it did that. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um it's 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 not gonna kill your mat. All right, so let's go to the next one. Let's see. <laughs> More live shows, please, and studio tour. I will. I'm so two seconds from having it fully completed and ready and um, 
just got to get a man with a drill to finish <laughs> some of it. I always, I'm like, oh, I'm, I don't need a man for this. I need a man for this. Um, I tried and it made me nervous. So very, very close to having that done. Show how to use the roll feeder. I will. We will do a dedicated video. I don't have it with me right now, but we will do a dedicated video for that one. Um, yes, more live shows, please. Absolutely, I will. Um, love the lives. This time is great for me in Australia as it, it's Sunday, so I'm not at work. Oh, so it's a whole different day for you. Oh, wow. Yeah, we went and spent Christmas in Austria um, to visit my sister-in-law, and it, it was wild, the time difference. Um uh, that took me some getting used to. Um, let's see. Which I know those two aren't near each other. But just saying time difference. I purchased a carrying case to hold my mat and easy to take to class. Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry. My braces are bothering me. Um, so, with the carrying cases, there is a scan and cut carrying bag that I have. Um, it's like a rolling bag that fits your scan and cut. And it has like a puffy... Uh, I think I put it on a show one time. Um, carrying case that it goes in and it holds all of your blades and stuff like that. It's really handy. Um, and I always have it linked in the description box. Um, and there's one for your blades that I've shown two on there. But she's saying she actually found something that fit for mats. Now, the rolling case, I put my mats in there. And what happens is I'll close it up and then they just sit on top of it so it's not getting built. So, e bent. so even my 12 by 24s fit in there just fine. Okay. Do you have any rainstorm t-shirts? I don't know what that means. I don't know what a rainstorm t-shirt is. Let's see. I need a case for my mats. Yeah. Yeah. I just keep them in my, um, when I'm traveling and going around, I just keep them in, uh, my, um, my case, my rolling case for them. How do I repair a mat that's been cut with light? Oh, we went over this one earlier. I'm sorry. Um, da -dun, da -dun. Uh, that's hilarious. I cut through my mat the first time I used it to. I wasn't even really using it. I was just playing around, but yeah, it was, it was not good. It, it's again, right of passage. I'm very grateful for this live because I work a full-time job. Time is not on my side. Well, you know, the great things about the pre-records and the lives is they get saved to our YouTube channel. So if you ever want to go back to watch any of it, uh, it is on there. Okay. The best way to learn to, is to do the project in the tutorial, whether you like the project or not. Yeah. It is about learning the machine and doing hands-on. So I'm a visual learning learner. So I feel like I'm more of a doer. Someone can tell me how to do something and I'm probably glazing over by the eyes. Like I just, I'm like, okay. Um, but if I'm doing it, then I remember the repetitive motion of doing it. So I retain better. So yes, doing it, the project, even if you don't like it, uh, yeah, doing the project, even if you don't like it, just to learn that skill is good. But try to find projects that you are interested in because you'll remember and you'll be even more excited. So, uh, never too late for braces. <laughs> Love the lives and Saturday evening is a great time for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just, I've always wanted them. It's always been a life dream or currently poking me in the cheek. All right. <laughs> um, fun on Saturday. I'm too old for the young stuff. Okay, there we go. Oh, <laughs> Maybe six instead of seven. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking so too. Because seven, I'm getting bad. Do whatever time works for you. Replays are always available. I rarely get to watch live, but I love when I get to. All right, awesome. Saturday evenings work great for me. I must be really behind on the comments. I'm really using that now. Let's see. You were right. I said to ignore the project for the first time using it and end up cutting my dog's name out of my brand new mat. They, they have the first project in there for a reason. They give you the material to do it. Like, they gave you the cardstock. So, you know, might as well. You are so fun and really awesome instructor. You encourage and are, you are, uh, you encourage and are so informative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Paula. Let's see. Uh, what is Puffy Film? Oh, so, okay. So, Puffy Film. I don't think I have any with me. No. I'll, I'll have some on the next show <laughs> just to show it. Um, Puffy, I apologize. I have to bend down real quick to fix my braces. And I'm not going to make you see this. Oh. All right. Sorry. They were stabbing me. And I don't think you guys want to see that. Um, I was going to end the live just so I could go fix it. But I was like, you know what? I'll just hide behind the machine. It'll be fine. Um, so Puffy Foam. Sorry. Uh, puffy Foam is a thick foam. Uh, I personally use it a lot when I'm doing an applique. So say like on a hat. And I put the puffy foam in there. So like I'll stitch out, 
put the puppy foam and then the fabric over that and then stitch around it cut well if you're using the skin cut just take the cut out and put it on top of that puffy foam and then stitch out and then it gives an extra like oomph to it and like a thickness to it for your applique that's what i use it a lot for um it scared me i was like what is that noise um so that that's what i use it for okay let's see I use Dawn liquid soap to clean my mats. Okay. I've never done that, but okay. Uh, you can get totally awesome on Amazon. We don't say that word here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here. I have the XDX 230DI. That's exactly what happened when I created when I created the box project. Glad I didn't do anything wrong. No, you're totally good. Uh, I have the rolling case and blade holder. It's phenomenal. We gotta keep ourselves organized. Uh, a carrying case doesn't. My a, a carrying case doesn't roll. Your carrying case doesn't roll. Do you have the brother one? Because the brother one has wheels on the back. It's like a suitcase style. Uh, let's see. Can I purchase a rotary blade holder without the kit? Do I have to buy the kit first? Yes or no? So you can get replacement blades for the rotary kit. Um, but I don't think, I don't think you can get replacement holders. Um, and I would put in the kit because the kit's going to have the activation code. So watch the video that we did dedicated to the rotary blade. Um, it'll have all the information on there, but yeah, I would recommend getting the kit. Um, you can always, uh, you can get a coupon. Um, you can always, uh, you know, get it down the road. You don't have to get it right when you get your scan and cut. If you have a 330, it comes with your machine. So you, you don't have to buy it separately. Uh, I love the scan and cut playbook. Oh, I love the playbook. You have the playbook. <laughs> the playbook was created by Cindy Hogan. She is a phenomenal scan and cut expert. Um, I actually usually work uh, Houston Cool Festival. And I love working with her and always tell them to put me with her because she is like the proper, correct, you know, way that you should do something. And I'm like, I rigged it and this is how it worked. <laughs> so we work well off of each other. And uh, she's, she's phenomenal. She wrote the playbook. I think brother discontinued it, which I think is silly brother, because that was a very good book. Um, the carrying case doesn't roll. The brother one should. All right, let's see. Where can I purchase a brother toolkit to use the scan and cut? Depends on which one you want. So you can purchase anything from wallbrands.com for the scan and cut. Um, and the toolkit, are you meaning the one that's like the spatula and the picking tool, which I don't remember where I put my picking tool. Um, that is on our website. And again, I leave everything in the description. Okay. Uh, when I bought the Stellaire, I also got a 325 that and a rolling case. That's a good deal. Um, but I already had the 330 and a rolling case. So I sold the 325 and rolling case. That That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Should I gradually cut thicker materials on the CM350 or set pressure for the thickness? Oh, okay. Um, test cut, test cut, test cut. If you have a CM, this is pre auto blade. I would test cut um, material and I would get a notebook. This is what I used to do. I would get a notebook and I would write down the material because not every cotton material is the same. Not every paper is the same. I would write what it was. And I would test cut to where I can get that crispest cut where it's not cutting through, but it's cutting enough, everything like that. And you play with your pressure and your blade. I would up my blade before I would up my pressure. Because you think you don't want to force the blade through there. You want the blade to, you know, nicely cut. You don't want to have to force anything. And a pressure is going to force something. So do your blade setting higher and higher. Remember, the lower the number, the less the cut. The higher number, the more of a cut for um, for a CM model. And the same with pressure. So that's that's what I would recommend starting off with. Let's see. Playbook is a book. Lots of projects using the scan and cut. Yes, it was. It was a really good book. And I'm really sad that they discontinued it. I need to get the scan and cut playbook. I think we have one left. I don't even know if it's online anymore. Um, what setting would you use for the puffy foam? If you have a CM model, so that's where you have to set your settings, I would probably use the deep set blade. I can't tell you exact numbers because every machine is different, but I would use that deep set blade. I think it's purple, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, if you have an SDX model, which is the auto blade, go ahead and use your black blade. There's no settings you need to tell it. Just tell it to cut and it automatically will cut it out beautifully. Uh, let's see. Thank you for answering my questions. I'm on the search for some now. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Brother came out with the playbook, Cindy Hogan. Yes, Cindy Hogan wrote it. She is phenomenal. Um, let's see. Which machine is best for the scan and cut? You mean embroidery machine or scan and cut, which is the best? Um, I mean, it works with any of your machines. I mean, it's a brother machine. So, yes, it likes to play nicely with brother machines. Um, but, I mean, any. Let's see. Live chat is great. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Uh, let's see. Do -do -do. Sorry, you see, again, pre records. I would have added all this part out of me just being like, do do. Um, I did the little box that you showed us at the as the first project was so much fun. Decided to do the second box, but I can can figure out how it goes together. So you can figure out how it goes together. Or, so the box is like it's got little slats. So you're just gonna take the crown part of the box. I think it's the crown that's on top. And you're gonna push the crown, the both crowns together like this. And then you're going to take the sides and come up. They have little slits, and you're gonna put them over the crown. So over the crown, and it's gonna slot into there on both sides. And that's how you're gonna close the box. Let's see. I have the XCF85, and now I'm thinking I should have bought the higher series because I don't have any demonstrations with my unit. I know. Um I don't even think I have an 85 with me that I could do anything with. Um, no, it, it's a good cutter machine. There's no wrong machines. It's just all features. So, um, no, the 85, she's still a good cutter machine. I don't I don't ever like to tell anyone that they don't have the right machine because what's the right machine? It's whatever you're using it for and what you like, you know. Um, but, I mean, it's it's a... It's an auto blade. So if you ever hear anything about auto blade, you can do it on your machine. Same concept. Auto blade's awesome. Um, lots of information today. So I'm just throwing information at you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, I know that brother, wait, brothers, how about another like baby lock embroidery? Um, so if you're cutting out an applique with the scan and cut, the machine doesn't know where, where the applique is going. So yeah, you could do it on your baby lock. Um, I am a brother girl though. <laughs> I am a brother girl. Let's see. Uh, no, I got the first box. Okay. It was the second one. Yeah. So that, that's how you slide it to get. So um, you would use this blade when you're cutting out paper. Uh, this would be the blade. So your black auto blade when you're cutting out paper. And you would put it on your low tack blue mat. Don't want to put paper on to anything other than your low tack blue mat because you will be picking off paper for quite a while. Let's see. Okay. I I think I've answered most of the comments. I'm, I'm scrolling here and I think I've answered most of the comments and we've been going for an hour and 37 minutes. So everyone real quick, put in hashtag all brands to be entered into the uh, $25 e-gift card. And I'll let you guys hurry up and put on all of your, um, any of your submissions. And if you've put one in already, it's, it's, it's entered you. Don't worry about it. You can put more if you want, but I don't think it makes a difference. So let's see. Let's see, do you know that I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any comments. Uh, I can see that. Let's see, uh, I have an SDX 325. I'm wondering if brother have a scoring tool. It's very discouraging for me to dive into cards. Okay, so I haven't done a video on it, but there is a um, an engraving tool um, that I've seen people use with cards. There is like different things like that that you can do scoring um so i haven't haven't jumped in that one so watch out for that video oh my god there's so many hashtag all prints. um because i'll i'll make sure to do make sure to do that let's see the scan cut 325 can send and receive from stellar yes it can yep it can send from the so all brother machines if they're wireless can talk to the scanning cut so you can send a design to the scanning cut but scanning cut can only talk back to the stellar and the She's haunted. Um, it's the Solaire and the uh, XP machine. Did I hit something? Um, she can only talk back. So that that's that's the differences with those. Okay. That's the machine being like, girl, wrap it up. Um, the Scan and Cut makes a mat holder. It's like an art portfolio. Oh, you're right. No wheels. Yes. Okay. So it's like this. I forgot about it. I'm sorry. And it's got a little handle on it. Um, no wheels. 
um, and it just lays them all flat. I don't have that because I just store mine in my carrying case, but there is one available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, sometimes I forget. I appreciate you guys reminding me of things. Um, making cards would be great tutorial, which would include scoring. I will do that. Yes, ma'am. Let's see. You're always so much fun to watch. Thank you. I'm like a cartoon character. I'm just kidding. Let's see. Um, I use the embossing tool to score. Okay, so Ms. Donna's done it before. Yeah, I, I need to do a video on that. I'm so sorry I haven't done that yet. Um, guys, really what I do is I go in the comments and I look what, what people are asking me the most. And that's how I decide what to do in the next video. <laughs> I really do. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, Miss Cindy said, yep, that, that's what she has. That's what she was talking about. Thank you, Miss Cindy. Let's see. All right, we're getting a lot of hashtag all brands in there. All right, I'm giving you a few more seconds. Here we go, a few more seconds. All right, I think, I'm trying to make sure there's no delay in the chat. Oh my gosh, I've been going for an hour and 40 minutes. I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, great live. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Andy. I appreciate that. Let's see. All right, guys. I think that is everyone's submission. So I'm going to add it to the stream. All right. Hashtag all brands. Let's draw. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Who is it? 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 Woo! All righty. The winner on the screen. All right. So if you see your name on the screen, <laughs> there you go. If you see your name on the screen, what you need to do is congratulations please enter events at i'm sorry please email events at all brands with your name number and address to claim your 25 dollars e-gift card congratulations everyone say congratulations in the chat we're going to be really excited for them that is awesome all right guys oh my goodness oh see y'all are so sweet you're all saying congratulations even before i said it y'all are awesome oh my gosh we have such a great community and i I, I, I love hanging out with you guys. So if you like today's live video, we will totally do some more. Um, thank you guys again for more than 12,000 subscribers. We are gaining like rapid. And you know what? I think a lot of people, they have never heard of a scanning cut. They've, they've heard of other machines that they can see in Walmart and stuff like that. Um, and they don't really realize how much this can do. And everyone asks me, what's the difference between all the machines? And I'm always saying, it's it's like those other machines, but on steroids. It does so much. Um, I think they just haven't heard about it yet. Haven't heard many things. So I think that's why we're getting so many at um, a time. One, the All Brand Show is just fabulous. And after hours, we're, we're talking about Scan and Cut, which I feel like there's, there's some education out there, but there's not a ton. So we are all about education here at All Brands. And we appreciate you guys from hanging out with us. Oh, I hope you guys had a good time. Oh my goodness, there's some H. Oh my gosh, y'all are so nice. Um, what is a leader sheet? A leader sheet is uh it goes on a roll feeder, and we'll go over that in the roll feed reader. Sorry, I'm still answering questions. Don't forget, oh man. don't forget to thumbs up the live. Yes. So I always say my little outro, which my uh my coworker Giselle was like, You realize you have these things that you keep saying, and everyone like it's like catchphrases. I'm like, I don't realize I'm saying them half the time. Um, but I always say, don't forget to like and subscribe because the easiest way to let us know that you want more of these videos. So thank you for reminding me to say that. I did not remember to say that. So, oh, let's see, thumbs up. Thank you. Great time. Love scanning cut. Thank you, Corey. Oh my gosh, y'all are just, just so nice. Oh my goodness. This is, this is getting a little addictive. All right. <laughs> thank you for the information. New the scanning cut. Debbie, hello. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Courtney. Y'all are amazing and so kind. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you had fun tonight. I hope you learned something fun. If you guys want another one, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe. It's the easiest way to let us know you want more of these videos. See, I remember to say it that time. Um, and I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any anyone. I don't think I am. Y'all have a good night. Bye.